One of the tricky parts of learning to code is knowing where to put all the fabulous stuff you're writing. Your classes go one place, your triggers go another, and what about testing your SOCL or running your unit tests? It can be very confusing for sure if you're new to this code stuff. With this lecture, I hope to clear up some of that confusion and get you started on your road to code. Together, we'll check out the three main tools used to create code within the Salesforce environment and talk in depth about one of them, the Developer Console. But don't worry, I'll do a deeper dive on others in future lectures. There are three basic tools that allow you to write code. Two of them live within Salesforce and the last is more of a category of tools. Let's start with the tool most familiar to Salesforce admins, the Salesforce admin settings. Almost everything you need to do with coding is available right from your trusty Salesforce settings right under the develop menu. So while good old familiar settings might seem the best place for an admin to start coding, you'll likely quickly become frustrated. The options within the settings do give you access to all your code, but they don't give you much functionality beyond that. For example, there are no debug tools, no code completion, and not much that makes it easy to program. So while settings is a good place to quickly view what you have running in your org, it doesn't have enough tools to make it easy to write code. So let's move on to a much better tool, the Developer Console. You can get into the Developer Console by clicking your name, Developer Console. The Developer Console is a collection of tools that you use through your web browser. How convenient. For the record, I'll be using Google Chrome. Through your browser and the Dev Console, you can create, debug, and test your force.com code. The great thing about the Developer Console is that it's immediately available, no downloading and installing any programs, no figuring out what your API key is, it's all about the immediate gratification. For beginning coders, I highly recommend the Developer Console for a great balance between ease of use and additional functionality. But before we roll up our sleeves and get a closer look at the Dev Console, let's look at our last category of tools those that live outside the Salesforce environment. There are several tools that are external to Salesforce but allow you to interact with your developer and sandbox environments. The two biggest examples are the Force.com IDE based on the Eclipse platform and the Sublime Text Editor with Maven's Mate plugin. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. Basically, it means software that helps you develop and connects directly with the place your code will actually live. These are both amazing tools that give you a whole series of functionality to make creating and managing code easier. So if they are so awesome, why not start there? I think, as a beginner, it is better not to have any more barriers in between you and getting that code to work than is absolutely necessary. But for now, let's check out my dev tool of choice, the Developer Console. You're probably super excited. I know I was. The code lives here. So take a slow deep breath and let's take a look at the bits and bobs. The easiest way to orient you is to show you what some of the code looks like within the dev console. Here we have a class within the console. It's really not much to look at in terms of code, but it's good to help orient you. You'll see at the top that all your open files will show in tabs. Anything with an asterisk needs to be saved and compiled. As soon as I save the file, the asterisk disappears. The great news is that, unlike with Java, you don't actually need to do anything to compile your code. You save the file, and if there are no problems with your syntax, then your code is compiled. Once you have a file open, all that code goes into your body of your open file. So what is compile code? You may be scratching your head about this whole compiling thing, it's kind of a big thing in other languages, but it's really not such a big deal in Apex. But since you're probably like me and want to know all the things, here's the scoop. Computers don't understand the code we type. They just don't get it. So, what we type needs to be translated or compiled into a language that they understand. Normally, this computer language is a way more efficient way to store code, but pretty darn impossible for us to understand. So our human-friendly source code, 
what we type into our classes and triggers is compiled into a computer-friendly code language by a program called Compiler. Lucky for us, in Apex, that is super easy. Just save your file and as long as it has no errors in syntax, then your code is compiled. If you try to save the file, or even before the dev console periodically tests for syntax errors, you may see that lovely little red exclamation in the sidebar with the line numbers like this one. Don't panic, this is 100% normal and expected. There is no developer, or well, none I know, who doesn't get this pretty much any time they write code. It means that something isn't quite right. Luckily, 80% or so of the time, the exclamation shows right next to the line which is causing the problem. The other 20% or so is likely above where the error marker is showing. It's sometimes hard for the console to know exactly what is causing the error. But here is a tip. Look for semicolons in the wrong places. So beyond where the error is, you can also see some hints on what the problem is within the Problems tab below the code window. This is where you get some of the most helpful guidance to what is wrong with your code. For example, we can see we have a problem on line 6. The Problem tab shows the compiler expected a semicolon but instead found something else. This is one of the times when the error is actually on the previous line. And yes, it's that little semicolon that I missed on the line above. You'll soon get used to reading these kinds of errors and fixing the problems as they come. Believe me, you'll get lots of practice. There are all sorts of other nice things under the tabs below. We have the Sockle Query Editor. We can also run and view the results of unit tests and look at the debug logs. So now that we have taken a peek around, let's get on to the really good stuff. How to create a new class and trigger files. It's actually pretty straightforward. To create a new class, in the menu, click File, New, Apex Class, you'll be asked to name the class, then you write your code and save it. To create a new trigger, in the menu, click File, New, Apex Trigger, you'll be asked to name the trigger and say what object you're working with. Then you write your code and save it. Pretty easy, right? But what about opening files that already exist? It's still easy. In the menu, click File, Open, select the type of file you want to open. It could be a class, trigger, or a Visual Force page. Then you can double click on the middle panel, the file you want to open. If you click on a file, then you can see all the related resources, which is helpful to orient yourself to what that piece of code does. In the related window, if the item has an arrow before it, then you can click on that and it will load the resource in the middle window. Sometimes, you just want to run a piece of code in a developer sandbox and see what it does. That's when execute anonymous code comes into play. Note that you can't save code in execute anonymous. It'll generally show you the last code you worked on. But it is a great way to test out sections of your code and learn to code because you don't have to set up a bunch of structure to test out a concept like loops or collections, etc. To create and run code in Execute Anonymous window, you can click on Debug, open Execute Anonymous window, type your code in the window, check the open log box, and click Execute. If there are no errors, then your code will run, and then you'll see the debug log. If there are errors, then they'll appear in a dialog box. If you want to see the lines that you wrote using system.debug statements, then check the box that says debug only. If you click on the query editor tab, you'll find all sorts of tools to work with Sockle queries, including creating new ones and accessing and rerunning previous ones. We haven't talked about Sockle yet. When we start learning about Sockle, we'll spend lots of time here. If you click on the Logs tab, you can see all the execution logs for code that we are running during our current session. You can run tests and also look at the percentage of code coverage and see any errors in your test coverage. We haven't talked about unit tests yet, but we'll come back to this later when we start writing unit tests. Wrapping up, we have explored the different tools to write code, 
the Salesforce admin settings and the dev console. We also know where to run SQL queries and execute anonymous code. We'll explore external tools like the IDE and Sublime Text with Maven's Mate plugin later. If you mention developer environments to any group of developers, they'll most likely have a spirited discussion of one IDE over another. I completely agree that there's a huge benefit for setting up these types of systems. And when you're new, I believe you shouldn't let anything get in your way. And setting a system to code in is in my mind an unnecessary barrier for a new coder. In the next lecture, we'll get started with Visual Force, the language that is used to build custom user interface on the Salesforce platform.